can everyone see my slides? Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you everyone uh, for being here. Um, today, I would like to share some findings on delay of gratification in preschool age children in Singapore. Um, the results are from uh, uh, the longitudinal early development, uh, early childhood development study uh, led in Singapore called SG Leads, led by Prof. Jun Young. Um, today, I will focus on the, uh, to discuss like how family process might contribute to the development of delay of education in young children and how delay of education might influence young children's behavioral development and academic achievement. Okay, um, I believe that all of you might know this very famous marshmallow test. It was conducted at Stanford University in 1970s. You know, all the young kids were placed in a quiet room and they were presented with one marshmallow. And the researcher told them, okay, I'm now going to, you know, leave the room and I will return in 15 minutes. If you can wait for my return, then I will give you two and without eating the marshmallow, I will give you two marshmallows. So, you know, children just, Top on differently in this test. Some of them just maybe at the marshmallow right away. Some of them just juggle to try to wait for more rewards to come in 15 minutes. And so, you know, this test become famous because of its uh, follow up effect. And um, people found that uh, children who are able to delay longer time for a larger but delayed reward usually uh, perform better in their later life, including in SAT score, meaning academic performance, and maybe have like healthier BMI, uh, better physical health, uh, better wealth, and better emotional behavior outcomes. And um, this test is called uh, delay of the gratification. You know, some kids just struggle to, you know, wait for larger reward. Uh, because some of them have developed this ability to delay gratification, but some of them might not have. So today I will talk about this delay of gratification. Its ability to inhibit immediate gratification in order to attain more larger reward. And um, it's also a future orienting on self-control because people need to postpone present uh, desire for the sake of future consequences. It's also um, effective and motivational component of a Aesthetic function, EF. EF is a goal directed conscious control of thoughts, actions, and emotion. And researchers also found that actually delay of education, although it's a effective emotion, a motivational component, it, it's related to people's cognitive function or other, con uh, such as working memory or other cognitive capacities, such as selective attention and cognitive representations. And usually delay of gratification develops very rapidly in early childhood, especially for children age, uh, at three and four uh, years of age. And children's ability to delay gratification in early childhood usually predicts a wide range of positive outcome in their adolescence and even in adulthood, such as academic success, better cognitive function, maybe better social emotional uh, outcomes, um, fewer behavioral problems, better health, and even wealth. So this ability is important. And today, I will try to answer five research questions. Firstly, I will introduce one relatively less study par paradigm to measure uh, delay of gratification, which is different from the classic measurement test. And next, because all of us know, delay of gratification predicts behavior outcome and academic success. So I will discuss how, you know, how this happens. And next, we would, we, I will try to answer as a parent or as a family member, what we can do to enhance children's uh, delay of gratification. And lastly, uh, lastly, I would like to explore the roles of delay of education in the relationship between uh, family, social economy status and children's outcome. For example, I would like to see whether delay of education can buffer the negative impacts of, for example, poverty on children's behavior problems or whether it can mediate uh, the influence of social economy status on children's academic outcome. 
Okay, so all the data presented today in this talk were from the Singapore Longitudinal Early Development Study, uh, wave one conducted in 2019 to 20, sorry, conducted from 2018 to 2019. And I used a subsample of children aged between three and six years old. They were nationally representative. They have 3,016 children. And all the children responded to a battery of child assessment, including delay of gratification working memory, and standardized academic achievement tests in reading and in math. And their uh, primary caregiver, majority of which are their uh, mothers, also took part in this study. And um, we can see that because they are young parents and near a half of them have a bachelor's degree and above. But of course, uh, we also have some like parents with lower uh, education levels. And um, all of them responded to uh, our uh, questionnaires on their uh, family, social economic status, parent, their own behaviors, their parenting practices, um, family processes, as well as children's behaviors. So we have uh, responses from children and responses from the parents, uh, sorry, the primary caregiver, uh, most of which are their parents. Okay, so now I will briefly describe this paradigm I used in my study, in this study. It's called a standard uh, choice paradigm. So it's, it's a little bit different from the classic marshmallow test because in the famous marshmallow test, the kids was only presented with one marshmallow, uh, meaning the present, the immediate, uh, immediate reward. They have to imagine, they have to think of the future reward, which is not present uh, with them. So they have to imagine, okay, if I can wait for a longer time, I don't eat this, I can get the potential future reward. But in my choice paradigm, we presented both immediate small reward and larger but delayed reward at the same time with the kids. So the kids can see the consequences of if I what I can get if I choose to get immediately uh, reward now, and what I can get if I choose to get later reward. So we will explain to the kids. Okay, if we want to choose to get one reward now, you can play with it immediately. But if you can wait until uh, the end of the game, which will take about ten minutes, you can get more reward. But if you choose to get later reward, you can't get it now. We have to wait for 10 minutes, then you can get it. So we explain this consequence to the kids. The kids can see both uh, different rewards at the same time. And we have nine test trials created across in three types of rewards and three types of choices. So we have three types of reward. Uh, we have balloon, erasers, and sticker. And we ch within each type of reward, we had three types of choices differed in, uh, which differed in the value of the delay reward. So they will have one, if you choose to get one now or two later, one now or four later, or one now and six later. And this choice paradigm with nine test trials show excellent internal reliability. Okay, um, but we might have the question, where did this choice paradigm valid? So, we want to answer, we want to see whether this paradigm really measures delay of education. Uh, because as I mentioned before, delay of gratification is actually under the big umbrella of self-control. So if this measure really measures delay of gratification, it should show good correlation with self-control of the children in their daily life reported by their parents, for example whether the kids can wait for their turn in games or whether they can think before they act. Um, it should also be related to active control, a uh, temper uh, temperament component, which is uh, theoretically uh, related to construct with delay of education. So we ask the parent whether the kids can show good concentration when they are doing activities, whether the kids can follow instruction and whether they are good at planning. And lastly, as I introduced in the introduction, Part. Delay of education might be if this measure measure delay of education. The score of children's score in this test should be related to their cognitive function, for example, working memory, which was measured by forward and backward tests, did you, did you spend task? Okay, so next we also want to see because we have uh, talk about the predicted effect, the strong predictive power of delay of education to future outcome. So if this choice paradigm really measures uh, delay of education, children's score in this test should predict their behavior outcomes and academic achievement. In here, I use 
behavior power index to indicate their behavior outcome. We have 13 items to measure children's externalizing behavior problem, including aggressive behavior or hyper uh, activity. We also have 13 items to measure children's internalizing behavior, such as withdrawal, anxiety, and depression. And we use the uh, widely used standardized Walker Johnson test of achievement um, test to assess children's uh, performance in reading and in math. Okay. And we can see that uh, our the developmental trajectory of the de delay of education was consistent with the literature. So basically, because we have nine test trial, uh, um, we can see that for maybe young kids like two year olds, they just tend to always tend to choose to get emit one with emit a reward. Uh, it means that they are not, they haven't developed the ability to delay gratification at age three. However, when they reach age five, most of them are able to delay gratification, meaning in more than half of the test trial, they chose to get more rewards later. Yeah. And we also find that there are some gender difference in delay of the gratification because we can see that the orange line indicates the girl score and girls in general were more likely to delay gratification, especially during young age. So basically, we can see that young girls uh, develop the ability to delay gratification earlier than boys. OK, um, to answer whether the this choice paradise valid, we can see that actually, yes, delay of the gratification choice paradise show a good construct validity because we can see that it's high, uh, it's positively correlated with uh, their self-control and active control in daily life reported by their parents. It was also positively correlated with their working memory task score. And more importantly, it really predicts children's uh, academic achievement in math and reading. It also predicts fewer externalizing behaviors like conduct problems. Yeah, this result were consistent with the literature. So we can say that this paradigm, this choice paradigm uh, was valid. But we might have a question, okay, then how, how does delay of gratification infant children's uh, behavior and academic outcome? We know that it had a good position, but uh, What's the mechanism? So uh, Dr. Wirth and co-workers actually uh, studied the classic marshmallow test and found that the predictive power of delay of education to future outcome, to uh, academic and behavior outcome primarily divide from self-control over and beyond cognitive function. Although cognitive function is a strong predictor to uh, children's uh, academic outcome. Yeah, but the, most of the predictive power came from self-control. And we replicated this model by using our choice paradigm. And we found that, yes, consistent with the literature on marshmallow tests, by using this choice paradigm, we also find, we also see that uh, actually self-control uh, can explain the inference of delay of creation on children's academic performance in reading, math, um, also uh, marginally significant media uh, inference of the level creation on children's, uh, sorry, in reading and math, and strongly, it's a strongly, uh, it's a strong predictor to children's behavior problems. Yeah, and as for working memory, although it did not like predict children's uh, externalizing and internalizing behavior, but it's a strong predictor to children's academic performance in reading and math. So with this uh, result, actually, we can just. Um, think about, uh, for example, like children with better ability to delay gratification. Usually they might also have better cognitive control. For example, they have better concentration, better selective attention. They might also be uh, able to update information, which is uh, the uh, process of working memory. So with this very important uh, cognitive process, they are usually able to perform better in academic test, uh, academic test. Okay. And also children uh, with better ability to delay gratification, they might also show higher self-control in their daily life. For example, they might be better at following instruction or they might be better to stop certain behavior if parents or teacher told them to do so. So, you know, the self-control also very important in learning process and studying process. That's why they might also be able to perform better in academic uh, 
uh, test as well as maybe have like fewer uh, behavior problem, they're more able to uh, maybe control certain conduct of uh, uh, certain behavior have fewer conduct problems. So that might be the uh, mechanism regarding how delay education influence children's uh, academic uh, outcomes and their behavior outcome. Okay, so we might have a next nice question. Okay, since delayed gratification is such a good ability, what can we do to enhance or improve children, young children's delayed gratification? So we know that children's self-control pattern are embedded in social contexts because they might learn from others, they might learn from uh, parents, teachers, peers. Yeah, they might receive instruction from them. We also find that parenting behaviors have, uh, might affect children's performance in experimental uh, delay of gratification task. For example, if the if parents are able to uh, give out appropriate in introduction of like being patient, being independent, yeah, the children are more likely to delay gratification. And also we can see that the parent-child relationship might also facilitate children to uh, use effective strategy to delay gratification. However, still very few studies have directly or systematically uh, investigate the role of parental behaviors, parenting practices, and family process in improving young children's de delay of education. So here, we include some measure to try to uh, explore, try to answer like how family dynamics might contribute to young children's delay of education. We use primary care gives education level to indicate the family as yes. We also increase certain measure to uh, measure parental behavior, uh, well-being, including economic stress, whether they can make ends meet at the end of months, and their parenting stress, whether they feel being a parent's heart or they are feeling tired or trapped as a parent. And we also uh, measure their uh, verbal cognitive ability and their self-control. For example, whether they are good at resisting temptation or whether they can think before they take action or whether they can refuse things they are bad but pleasant for them. Okay. And next, we also have some measures meant to measure parenting practices and family process processes. We capture parental warmth, harsh punishment. These are well studied uh, parenting behaviors. And we also measure uh, how often the parents set rules or set limits on children's daily life, including bedtime, snack, making friends, time spent after school, and doing homework. Uh, we also measure how uh, family members resolve their conflicts, whether they fight, throw things, hit each other, or criticize each other, or they can calmly discuss problems to resolve conflicts. And lastly, because the whole interview were con uh, was conducted in respondents home. So interviewer also observe their physical home environment to rate how dark, clean or cluttered the home was. Okay, so these are the variables we use in answering this research question. And actually we found that yes, parents' uh, education level uh, predicts children's uh, delay of education. And this relationship might be accounted for by parental well-being. So we can see that economic stress actually uh, predicts uh, like lower levels of the level education score, but parenting stress here did not uh, uh, have the effect here. And um, parent uh, PCG's verbal con cognitive ability and their self-control also positively predict children's ability to delay gratification. Okay, lastly, we can see that we also have some family contributors here. We can see that if uh, the family had more conflict, children might have like lower score in delay gratification. Um, we also see that parental warmth and harsh punishment here did not uh, like significantly predict delay of education. However, the rules parents enforce on children and um, how clean, how organized the homeworks predict uh, children's delay of education. So we can see that actually, yeah, what we can from this data, we might have some idea like what we can do to help children improve their delay of education. So as a parent, our own well-being, our own self-control, and as a family, how we resolve the conflict, how we you know organize the home, and how we set rules on children might influence their delay of education.
Okay, so since delay of education is related to children's behavior, also related to uh, family uh, processes, so we want to know whether uh, what role delay of education play in this relationship between uh, SES and children's behavior problems. So uh, there is a very well uh, established model called family stress model to explain the influence of family economy hardship on children's developmental outcomes. So researchers found that actually there is a series of mediating family processes such as maybe like a poor family might have more uh, punitive parenting, maybe less responsive interaction with the children, or maybe have poor quality of parent-child interaction. And this might lead to children's more uh, behavioral problems. However, it's like, um, it's not necessary that low-income family children usually have more behavior problem because we have child-level protective factor. And self-regulation is um, uh, um, actually is a good moderator here, is a good protective uh, factor here. And some researchers found that uh, children's ethical control can actually moderate the influence of family stress or uh, poverty on children's uh, uh, conduct problems. And here we might also expect that delay of education might play a similar moderating role here, but we need to investigate this. We, we, we need some um, evidence. Okay, so now uh, some additional stress measure will economy hardship. So this was indicated by a total score of five family economy difficult events, such as borrowing money, borrowing behind paying bills, applying for government assistance, having their car or home uh, repossessed, or experience uh, utility cut off in the past 12 months. And we also captured their parenting stress and this uh, measure was covered in the previous uh, topic. So here I will just go ahead to present our result. And um, we can find that uh, both economy hardship and parenting. Okay, here the outcome variable is children's behavior problems. So we can see that both economy hardship and parenting stress predicts children's uh, behavior problem as expected. And um, also if parents have like fewer of warm parenting practices, or maybe they use more harsh punishment, children will have more behavioral problems. This was also well established. And um, the in interesting finding was that we observed inter significant intervention effects between economy hardship and delay of education. Uh, this might indicate that delay of education might moderate the effect of economy hardship on children's behavior problems. And we conduct uh, uh, some further tests to find that the relationship, the negative impact of economy hardship on children's behaviors only significant for children with low and middle level of delocation. But for children with high level of delocation, this negative impact was non-significant. So this again proved that delay of education can buffer the negative impact of economy hardship on children's behavior problems. Okay, the last question was, okay, Okay, just now we answered the question regarding the role of the education in the relation between uh, poverty and behavior. Then what role uh, the uh, education play in the relationship between family SES and children's academic achievement? Here we have another theory, uh, well-established theory to uh, uh, answer the question in the literature. So this is called family investor model. So the, this model found that um, usually people like children from uh, higher or middle income family, they might have more materials at home. They might receive more cognitive stimulation or maybe they might spend more time tuition. So we found that uh, family investment actually can explain the gaps uh, in academic achievement between poor family and middle and high income uh, families. Uh, however, this um, model have been really like taken uh, some factors into account, okay? So we know that cognitive stimulation and stimulating home learning experience might account for the influence of SES on children's cognitive ability and their academic achievement, okay? Um, However, the role of rule setting for children, parenting their own self-control, as well as children's delay or communication and working memory was not taken into account in the uh, 
traditional traditional uh, kind of pathway. So here we would like to see whether you know this feature plays some role in this cognitive pathway. Okay, so we are using the uh, similar measure uh, in the first four topics, but some new measure include rule setting. So rule setting was indicated by two observational measures, including uh, rule setting on daily life. This has been gone through just now, but we have another component called uh, rules on technology use. So we have four items to capture whether the PCG enforce rules for children on use of the, the uh, digital devices. Uh, for example, their time span, the type of program or games they use on the digital devices. So rule setting uh, indicated by these two different type of rules. And we also measure parents' uh, involvement in reading activity with the children. We ask how often the PCG reads to the child and how often the PCG encourages the child to read. And we uh, conducted uh, uh, SEM to uh, establish the mediation model. So firstly, let's look at children's reading scores because we have reading and math score. So let's look at children's reading score first. And we can see that, okay, as is better, like SES do have some, uh, does have some influence on children's reading score. And from this model, we can see that like true uh, PCG with higher education level, they usually have like better verbal cognitive ability. Uh, consistent with the literature. And we can also see that the PCG verbal cognitive ability had a direct effect on children's delay of education. So it might be because if pa parents have better ability, uh, verbal cognitive ability, they might more likely to use appropriate instruction for the kids to encourage them to maybe resist temptation or ask them to be patient. So with this appropriate instruction, children usually be more likely to delay gratification. So we see a direct effect here. And also parents with better verbal cognitive ability tend to set more rules or enforce rules on children's daily life and their technology use. So we can imagine probably with their better uh, verbal ability, their life they're just less likely to use uh, like harsh punishment, like spanking, grounding the kids. Instead, they set rules. They set clear rules and enforce the rules. And we can see that the rules setting again predict children's delayed education. So it means that if the children have already practiced like following rules, they're more likely to delay gratification. Okay, on the other hand, uh, parents' verbal comfortability is also related to their either direct or indirect involvement in reading activity with the children. And we can see that doing this cognitively stim stimulating activity actually uh, was positively related to children, uh, children's working memory. And working memory as an important cognitive function predict children's reading score. Okay, so we also see that delay of education show a positive relation to children's working memory. Okay, it mediated the inference of PCG's verbal cognitive ability on children's working memory. Okay, so uh, at the same time, we also see that actually the rule setting and um, reading activity with the children had direct effect on children's reading uh, score. So this model can, can explain that delay of education and working memory are important mediating process in the relationship between SES and children's reading score. So we also look at children's math score, a similar, but the main difference was that at this time, when we look at children's math score, PCG's rule setting and PCG's reading activity with children did not show direct effect on children's math score. However, these uh, parental involvement and parenting still predict children's delayed education and their working memory, which again further uh, facilitate children to perform better in math. So uh, to conclude, uh, we did find a cognitive pathway from SES to academic achievement with DOG, or uh, education, and working memory as the mediating process. Okay, just to summarize again, PCG education level was positively associated with their verbal cognitive ability, and PCG with higher 
verbal connectivity tend to enforce more rules for children, okay? Also provide more cognitively stimulating activity. And on one hand, rule setting was related to children's delayed education. On the other, other hand, cognitive uh, stimulation was called correlated with children's working memory. And um, both were setting and cognitive stimulation and direct effect on children's reading score, but not on their map score. However, DOG was associated with better uh, working memory, which then strongly predict children's higher uh, reading and map score. So, okay, to conclude, uh, the education and working memory are important. A more important mediating process that account for the influence of SES and parenting behaviors on children's academic achievement. Okay, so yeah, maybe I have present like too too much uh, too too many results here. So just to have some general discussion. Firstly, why delayed education is important. Because delayed education predicts positive later outcome. It can predict fewer behavior problems. It can predict better academic achievement. It's also linked to children's self-control in daily life and their better cognitive function. And interestingly, it can buffer the negative impacts of families, uh, economy, uh, disadvantage on children's behavior problem. So we say delayed education is an important capacity. Um, since it's important, how we can improve children's ability to delay gratification. So we can see that role models are very important because children might learn from their parents, learn from teacher, even their friends, their peers. So as parents, if we have like better self-control in daily life, if we can receive some immediate temptation or we, if we can, you know, break some bad habit or we can uh, show some, you know, good, um, inhibitory uh, inhibition, children might learn from us. Also, they might observe how family members deal with each other. So if family members can be sought confidence in uh, maybe, um, uh, if they resolve conflict in a in positive way, children will learn from them because they say, okay, I can just, I don't need to inhibit anything. I can fight each other. I can hit each other. I can throw things. Or if they found that actually family member can use emotional regulation to resolve the uh, conflict, children will also learn how to control themselves. And home environment is important. If the home is clean and organized, it means usually the family may have like better self-discipline. Um, although we are saying punishment is not good for children's behavior, it doesn't mean that we do not need to set any limits on children's behavior. Instead, we need to enforce clear rules and boundary on children so that children will learn how to follow instruction, how to uh, inhibit their immediate design and how to plan, you know, uh, purposely. Um, uh, uh, lastly, uh, we might try to use more appropriate instruction and encouragement of self-control. Yeah, so this is related to uh, PCG's uh, verbal cognitive ability. Okay, last question. What else we can do to facilitate children to achieve uh, positive outcome, like behavior and academic outcome? So again, uh, more nurturing parenting and less punitive parenting. We can, this can help children reduce their uh, conduct and emotional problem. Also, we can uh, enforce, enforce rule for children. This is to improve their self-control and delocation since it might relate to children's uh, later outcomes. And lastly, we, try, we can try to facilitate stimulating home learning experiences and provide more cognitive stimulation so as to improve promote children's cognitive function, which is strong predictor to children's uh, academic performance. Okay, yeah, that's all for my talk. So if you want to discuss with me or you have any question, you can just let me know. Thank you. Okay, hmm. okay. Uh, thank you so much for Lucy's interesting presentation. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the audience must have a lot of questions and comments. If you have any questions, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, thanks. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Th thanks for the presentation. I thought it was very interesting because uh, we often view delayed gratification as a trait, you know, uh, that sort of whether you have it or not. But I think what's very interesting and useful with this study is that you contextualize uh, delayed gratification and, and you show that actually it is context dependent. 
Yes. So I, I, I appreciated that. But I have a question. Sure. Uh, and it, it was a question that sort of came up uh, earlier when, when okay. you talked about rewards. Mm, okay. You know, I, I think the relationship between delayed gratification and success um, may actually be spurious. Um, contingent upon a third variable that affects both. And, and this third variable is in, it is in fact, as you've mentioned, uh, family background. So let me give you an example. Um, high SES families have the ability to give their children bigger rewards, mm. right? They say, oh, if you, if you study hard and if you do well, I, I'll bring you to Disneyland, you know? They, they have the ability to yeah. give their children. I mean, the, the, the family resource is able to determine the size of the reward. Mm. So the size of the reward determines the willingness to delay gratification. Mm. So it is not delayed. It is not self-control in itself that, that determines the outcomes, but it is the willingness to self-control with an eye to future rewards, with, with an eye to future returns. So the real reason for academic success is not delayed gratification, but the rewards that it brings. And this reward is in the first place determined by the ability of families to enhance the size of rewards. Yeah. That then uh, determines the outcome. So, yeah, so, so the first question that came to my mind is this possibility that the relationship is actually spurious. Uh, you want to comment on that? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, uh, I think that's a um, good question. And we might have like different angle to answer this question. So firstly, as you mentioned, sometimes, especially maybe richer family, they might use a bit external reward to motivate children to study. And actually when it comes to motivation, we have like uh, instinct, motivation, or you know, something external. So some study also find that if we keep, you know, uh, exposing children to some external motivation or external rewards, some, sometimes they might just reduce their instinct motivation. For example, they just study for their rewards. If one day the reward disappear, they might lose their motivation. So sometimes we might say uh, we, we cannot totally rely on this like external reward. Sometimes we need to like motivate children's instead motivation. For example, if you if you are talking about like cognitive, uh, sorry, academic achievement. Yeah, we also have to think about although here we also have a reward like uh, to uh, measure the levification. But the main construct is the choice, children's choice, okay? Where do they want to choose to get a small but immediate reward? Or they want to tolerate, to tolerate some frustration, then, you know, to wait for like larger or bigger future reward. So if you use study as an example, for example, sometimes children might like, like to watch TV or do something instead of studying. Because watching TV or playing, so immediate rewards for them, right? It's very pleasant, the immediate reward. Like, but for study, the future reward might not be immediately available. So for example, if uh, the pleasure like of having a score, or maybe the praise from parents of their like good score might be a reward for them, but it's not available immediately. It might be, you know, in the it might happen in the future. So children have to make the choice. Whether they want to reward, Present, or they want to you to um, to uh, receive the temp uh, temptation to reach the higher reward. So, in terms of this process to uh, train children, even also do that. You know, uh, what what we what we can use can, um, might not be limited to you know some monetary reward. Yeah, sometimes some uh, children might pressure, uh, might treasure uh, parents' encouragement or their uh, or their acknowledgement. So this could be a reward. Yeah, yeah, rewards for them. So of course, like richer family have 
like bigger physical reward. But sometimes it might not work because if people mm. can't, you know, using external motivate or reward mm. to motivate children, they might lose their instant uh, uh, instinct motivation. So it really depends. Mm. But maybe yeah. this topic is like a good question. <laughs> I just yeah. try to pick some angle to answer. Yeah. I, 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 let me just respond briefly. I, I, I think the children, all else held constant, uh, would be responding to great, bigger rewards mm. uh, because it makes it's like you know it makes the investment worth the while you know if the rewards are bigger yeah. so to me right the true test of delayed gratification is if you decrease the rewards and that they would have self control that notwithstanding mm. then that would be truly a measure of DG you know uh, delayed gratification mm. Mm. Uh, so the shrinking of rewards notwithstanding uh, delayed gratification still remains would mm. be in fact a true measure of delayed gratification as opposed to uh, adjusting the rewards and making it bigger. Then we don't know what is the real reason, you know. Yeah, yeah. okay, ju th th that's just that, yeah. Thanks, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Can, I, thank you. can I say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. please go ahead. Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Uh, Vincent, I think that's a great question, but you look at our uh, measurement for delay of gratification, it is a continuous variable. It's not yes or no uh, measure whether you have it or not. Um, and in the experiment, so the, the indicator is zero to 10, right? And uh, in the experiment, we do manipulate whether it's a small reward or a big reward. There are one compared to two, one compared to four, and one compared to uh, six, for example. So these are in the experiment and, and children will have to make a decision based on the amount of reward they're getting. So that's one point. The second point is that uh, I think the, we're also controlling for the socioeconomic status of the parents. So this is holding families with the same income or parents' education, uh, whether these continuous measure of delay of gratification still makes a difference uh, on children's test scores and behaviors. So I, I don't know if that helps or not, but uh, you know, the uh, we're, we're comparing families with the same resources. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And a, a, a continuum of uh, degree of freedom, not whether they mm -hmm, have it or mm -hmm, not. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that's that's right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually. I also find that, for example, for, uh, in relation to this question for the uh, for the interaction term, I would find that even in uh, for the family with economic hardship, then the so the DOG can still buffer uh, so the negative effects of economic hardship, which means that even in family with economic hardship, there's still an effect, which means that the DOG. Uh, not only, uh, yes, you know, so on, and uh, not only from, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, from mm -hmm. and from. That doesn't yeah. have to go necessarily with SES. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we, uh, we we have a question from uh, uh, from Tuya, and so so the question is that whether there is any reason why children at age three for uh, immediate uh, gratification compared with the children at age four or five. Does it uh, relate to a rule setting and a boundary setting? Yeah, actually, I'm also very interested in this question because we also find some gender difference. Yeah. For example, girls are more likely to, yeah, to have high levels of the DOG. Yeah. Do you have any explanations? Yeah. So, firstly, it's uh, yeah. So it's um. So it will be related to the developmental strategy of self control because self control is the ability that children need to learn or they can be trained. Yeah, it can either be from, for example, we are the learning from, so if they break the rule, what, you know, what consequences they might have or if they follow the rules. So basically they are learning. They are learning how to self, uh, like control themselves with the age increase. So for young kids, like age three years old, firstly, the 
uh, their, their cognitive function are yeah, still you know, developing. So firstly, whether they can understand the different, uh, different consequences like choosing now or later. So this is one, one reason. Some of the children might not really understand, okay, how long I need to wait? What's the concept of now? What's the concept of later? Or you know, the concept, what the consequences mean to me? Uh, what's the difference in one reward and two? Sometimes the children, firstly, cognitive uh, function is not uh, developed well at three years of age for them to understand the consequences of this choice paradigm, this one thing. Second, as I mentioned, they need to learn, okay? They need to, uh, they need to, they can either observe people's behaviors or maybe they might learn from the consequence of like breaking rules or following rules or if like parent never set rule for them, yeah, they might not uh, develop this ability uh, so early. So yes, sometimes we can say that if the uh, PCG or maybe uh, if the parents, also parents have their like, with the parents, we really encourage children to do so. Uh, so firstly, learn from the consequence by the, uh, by, the, by the children. And second, they might observe. For young children, sometimes they, they might not be able to really like uh, comply or obey uh, parents' instruction. Yeah, but with age, they know, you know, they are a, a human being in a social context. They had to obey some rules sometimes and they have to comply with the environment or others sometimes. So they are learning. So it's more like a developmental process and the learning process. So that's why for age three years old, sometimes they just choose to get immediate reward because they know the reward. You know, this hour uh, as a very automatic response. I want to get the uh, reward immediately. I want to satisfy myself immediately. Whether they can understand the future consequence or, the, or maybe they have this ability. Yeah, maybe not so, not developed, not developed yet at this age. Yeah, so, so we will have their biological reason, their social uh, learning process to explain why young kids might not be able to uh, do this. Also, just now, like Dr. Wang mentioned, the gender difference. Sometimes, because we are also saying it was related to uh, temperament. So actually, uh, like girls usually just, you know, have like better uh, 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 extra control than boys in, as in their temperament. So temperament also related to their behaviors. But of course, like later on, like how the family nurture them uh, also play a role there. Okay. okay yeah. hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's yeah. another comment and question from uh, CC. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and the audience says that a standard experimental study has failed to hold up under close uh, yeah, con under close scrutiny. And uh, so it asked whether there are any uh, other possible explanations for why poor kids would be less motivated to wait for the second much more. Okay, so you say it suggests other possibility explanation for why poor children would be yeah. less motivated to wait for the second marshmallow. Okay, yeah. So in my um, in my uh, third question, so firstly, sometimes we might say, yeah, sometimes poor. So it might be related to the like um, modeling or maybe social uh, uh, learning, uh, behavior learning process. Uh, there, there might be one explanation related to my answer to the previous question just now. So sometimes, um, like people from poor family, um, usually. Firstly, they might not really have like set a lot of like rules against our, we, we might be using the same, but it might uh, explain the inference. So sometimes they might really set a lot of rules. So we all in this study also see that like you usually poor family, they just use, for example, the kids like snacks. Okay, they just use snack to satisfy the kids. Okay, or maybe use sweet drinks. So usually they might not really uh, think about what rules we can, you know, uh, set for the kids. And we just use those um, immediate reward to satisfy the kids. Yeah, since we might not have like too many things to make my kids happy. So I just want to use this to satisfy the kids. And so uh, in my, there might be a lack of like training the kids yeah, to uh, control, to control themselves. 
And sometimes for a, farm, for a family, they might spend uh, less time with kids. So sometimes they might be busy with like making a lot live or sometimes they're busy with like too many children. So time spent also like how parents interact with the kids, the quality of communication. And again, related to their verbal ability. So when we interject the kids to do or not to do some, something, do we explain why? So actually this explanation and appropriate instruction for the kids to do or not to do something also um, uh, play some uh, role here because the kids need to understand why I should do this, why I shouldn't do this. So usually control is the external, uh, external control first. Then children need to learn how to internalize this control to themselves. So parents' instruction might also be important. So we are not really saying like low fab of poor family um, uh, like have fewer way to motivate the kids. Actually, the kids might have their internal motivation. Yeah, just, just that whether the poor family uh, parents would try to nurture their willpower, willpower of the children. So it's more like a nurturing thing, not nurturing process, whether they would like to, or whether they know how to motivate children's willpower. So I, I think this is also related to one of uh, your questions, like it's a matter of whether the children want to or is willing to so children's willpower their like internal motivation yeah is also important here so i would say the like nurturing uh, environment or again maybe very basically whether they you know their basic need already business is satisfied sometimes they just cannot uh maybe pursue higher motivation so they just use the uh immediate reward to satisfy the kids to make them happy. So again, this is a social uh, uh, context thing. Mm. Okay. Thank mm. you very much. Yeah, that's all. Uh, that, that's, there are my own thoughts. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, and um, I have another question about, uh, so, uh, about the DOG because uh, you, uh, you find that, for example, people with high level of delay of gratification usually do very well in standardized scores. They have a high level of self-control. They have a high level of self-discipline. So I just want to ask, does, you know, so, uh, so does overemphasize on DOG will undermine students or people's innovation? Yeah. Is there any research in this area? Oh, sorry, just now, oh, can you repeat the last sentence? I can't hear you clearly just now. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I just want to ask to what extent is, um, uh, to what extent does delay of uh, gratification undermine or promote innovation? Is there oh. any research in this area? Okay, motivation, right? And, uh, so innovation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, innovation. Oh, let me see. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so uh, yes, actually there are plenty of uh, research. There are plenty of uh, research on like exploring how you know the education might uh, might be related to uh, other outcome. So um, innovation. Mm. So uh, let me think about this. So you um, innovation. So can you give me some example? So if you would like to like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. For example, if mm -hmm. students are very, you know, disciplined, they did very good. Uh, so they do very good in uh, standardized score, which means that they they can only do very good in standardized score, but they're not very innovative. Is it? Yeah. So uh, this is, just, I guess, this is not my research okay. area. I see. So actually, delivication, as I mentioned, right, is uh, one component of uh, executive function. Executive yeah. function is like, um, uh, it's a purposeful process, like they are like cautious of control there. It's not really control of their like emotion, action, emotion. It's really, it's also related to, uh, so if we're talking about aesthetic function, they have also have, co uh, they have a cognitive flexibility. It's not okay. only like, yeah, control. So, but however, I, from what I have read from the study, delay of the question might not be really significantly related to flexibility. 
Yeah. However, if we are talking about working memory, since delivication was related to working memory, right? And some other researchers suggest that, you know, within the aesthetic function, actually working memory could be related to their like uh, creativity, their mm -hmm. flexibility, or it can transfer to other cognitive performance. So we believe that if since we are talking about delayed education related to, to some children's cognitive function, like working memory. And um, working memory is also related to actually a wide range of uh, uh, cognitive uh, processes such as flexibility, cognitive flexibility, or other processes. So we believe that it might have, uh, although some, so the current researchers, sometimes they did not find this relationship, but we can look into look in this in more detail. But we believe that Delay education might serve as a, for example, fun, uh, a basic like fundamental ability for people to uh, build something extra on top of it. Because like delay education, you need to learn how to control your, uh, how to pay attention, how to control your cognitive uh, like attention or regulating your cognitive process. So we believe that there might be some uh, indirect effect on a positive sure. effect of deliberation on flexibility or you know innovation but how however for for now to my best of knowledge not many study has really found this so actually we believe there might need some extra uh, facilitating you know how to help children to transfer deliberation to other higher like higher order of cognitive flexibility yeah, so I think that's a good question. So it took me some time to try to recall some research researchers that, yeah, not a lot of result on this yet, but we believe that there might be some indirect effect on those, but we might need some, you know, facilitated uh, support, yeah, to, you know, really uh, inf uh, enhance this. Okay. Sorry, did I answer your question? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Are there any other questions? So, uh, if not, because this is already one o'clock, so if there are not any questions, we need to finish. And please let me to thank Dr. Chenuzi again for her very interesting presentation today. And please pay continuous attention to other CFPR seminars uh, activities. Okay, yeah. Thank you so much and uh, have a nice weekend. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Yeah, thank Bye. you. See you. Bye. -bye.